you have an application and you want to implement a search feature where a user can type part of a movie and it'll search by the title or the plot. So in this case, Captain America Civil War, it had Iron Man in the plot and it returned this, but then we also had a few movies with Iron in the title. So our movies controller is fairly simple. The index section looks for this params term that comes from the input of our search. And if it's present, then we pass in params term, otherwise we return nil. If search is found, so meaning that it was not nil, then we search on our title using some SQL. We wrap our search parameter with parentheses, so the like clause will search for the title or plot anywhere within the text. While this can work if you have just a few fields and not too many records, it's not very efficient. And that's what we're going to look at solving today, where we can introduce Elasticsearch into our Rails application. And we're not going to look at too much of the actual Elasticsearch commands, but it is a RESTful search. So if you get a GET request to your Elasticsearch server, you would get a response like this. So instead, we're going to use the GEM search kick to interface with the Elasticsearch service. So to get started, we'll first need to install Elasticsearch, and you can do that using brew install Elasticsearch. And once it is finished downloading, and you can run brew services start Elasticsearch if you want Elasticsearch to start whenever you restart your computer. Or if you don't need it to start every time, then you can just simply type Elasticsearch. Next, in your gem file, add the gem search kick. Be sure to run bundle and restart your Rails application. Next in your movie model file, you want to add the term search kick, and this will index the model whenever a record is inserted or changed. And you can add some additional parameters to this. For example, if you want to search just the title and the plot with the word middle, meaning that your search terms can occur within the middle of the word, then you're able to pass an array of your different attributes. And you can also create a method called search data. And this method will accept a hash of your different parameters. And with this, you're going to be able to limit what is actually indexed. So for example, if we just want to search on our title, year, or plot, then we can pass in a hash like this. So let's go ahead and make sure that the Elasticsearch server is running. And you can do this by just calling a curl request on the localhost port 9200 and then you should get a hash return. And once we have verified that the Elasticsearch service is running, we can call rake search kick reindex class equals movie, and this will go ahead and reindex our entire movie model. So now back in the movies controller, we can comment out this query, and instead we can just pass in movie search and then pass in our search parameters. And now if we start up our application, we can type our search for iron again, click search, and then you'll see that our query is a little bit different. Where in yellow, we have our post to the Elasticsearch service, and then below, we got our return from all of the records. And while this may not increase your speed for your application for a smaller set of records, if you start getting millions of records, this will provide a much faster search. And with your search, you are also able to pass in some more criteria. For example, if we want to search where the year is greater than 2000, then we're able to pass in where and then the hash. And whenever you have some kind of condition like greater than and then your value for a attribute, you'll need to wrap it in a hash as well. So now back in our application, we can create a search for iron again. And then you'll see that only movies greater than the year 2000 are returned. And be sure to check out the documentation on GitHub because there's a lot more options with searching and querying on your models. Next, let's look how we can add a type ahead. A type ahead is where you can start typing some text and then you will get a response immediately or within a few milliseconds of your search results. So using type ahead is a great way to reduce the load for loading large data sets. Instead, the server will be queried periodically as you're typing and it'll then return just the results that you're actually looking for. So to get started, Click on the download, and then save the type ahead bundle JS file into your vendor's assets. Next in your application.js file, you want to require the type ahead bundle file. And again, this is the file that is stored in your vendor assets. Next in your routes file, we can add a collection, 
And within the collection, we can get a get autocomplete. So in our terminal, we can run rake routes to see what this autocomplete path will look like. So now we have access to the autocomplete movies underscore path, and you can see the URI. It is simply a get request to slash movie slash autocomplete. And I won't go into it too much, but if you go under your movies.js file, you can add in the following code. And basically this will look for the ID tag of movie search that we'll add to our input. And then it calls type ahead and then source movies where movies is defined as the bloodhound. And this is what is making the get request or slash movies slash autocomplete. And then you'll see that it's passing in the parameter query. So in our index view, we'll need to modify our input text and we want to pass in the ID movie search. And then we also want to pass in autocomplete to off. And we want to do this because we don't want the browser dropdown to be displayed as we're creating our own type ahead dropdown. And by default, the Twitter type ahead is not styled. So under the movie CSS file, I just found some bootstrap three friendly CSS and this is what we'll use for that. And then within the movies controller, we can have a action called autocomplete and we're just rendering a JSON response and we're doing a movie search passing in our parameters query that's passed in from the JavaScript. And then we have our fields that we want to search on and then we have the match word start. We're only doing a limit of 10 because you don't want to return a bunch of records. And then at the end, we're calling map and then title. So we can just return a array of the titles. So going back to our application, we can then refresh our page and then we can start typing into our search. And you'll see that now it brings down a list of these different suggested items. If you click on one of them, we then click on search and then continue our search. However, this isn't a really good example. A better example would be on a form field where you have thousands of different categories that you want to label for your movies. And when you're adding in, you can just start typing a search and then add them in there. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.